Here are the real reasons why these people lost billions of dollars. Number 9. Masayoshi-san SoftBank, Japan's largest telecom and internet company, was founded by Masayoshi-san, a serial entrepreneur and the third richest person in Japan. However, he has the distinction of losing the most money in history as he lost nearly $70 billion in the dot-com crash of 2000. When the internet bubble burst, shares of SoftBank went down 98%. And that's really what affected San's net worth so much. That's the real reason he lost so much money. Was there anything that he could have done differently? Sure, of course, but a lot of things were simply out of his control. However, he's still far from broke. As of March 2020, he has a net worth near 16.6 billion. Even though he's taken the biggest loss in history, let's just say this guy is still winning in life heavily right now. Hey, do us a quick favor and hit that like button right there. Number 8. Elizabeth Holmes Back in 2014, Theranos and its CEO and founder, Elizabeth Holmes, were on top of the world. At that time, Theranos was a revolutionary company. Holmes was called a genius who was seen as the female Steve Jobs. Holmes was then the world's youngest female self-made billionaire with a net worth of around $4.5 billion. Then, it all came crashing down. Theranos basically just completely lied about their technology. Yeah, she made her paper billions because of a giant lie. The real reason she went broke was because she was never really rich to begin with. The lesson here is to not run a scam company, right? Also remember that hilarious fake voice of hers? This is what happens when you work to change things and first they think you're crazy. Holmes was charged with fraud and the company was forced to close its labs and testing centers. In 2016, Fortune named Holmes one of the world's most disappointing leaders. Fast forward to 2020 and Holmes is still broke and still dealing with her charges with the government. Her trial is set for March 2021. Number 7. Adolf Merkel Adolf Merkel was Germany's 5th richest man and the world's 98th richest man at one time. Oh, yeah. In March 2008, his personal fortune was estimated to be roughly $12.8 billion by Forbes. Merkel made his money by building his family business and chemicals into one of the biggest pharmaceutical wholesalers in the world. He founded Ratio Farm, a maker of generic medicines that became a recognized brand itself. In 2008, his investment company needed cash because of the financial crisis. Banks demanded more collateral and called in loans early. In order to keep his company afloat, Merkel put up his own I personal assets idea. as collateral and he agreed to sell Ratio Farm in order to pay down the company's debt. This was his first big mistake, but his worst decision was his giant gamble on one single stock. Merkel made a bet that shares of Volkswagen would drop like a rock in late 2008, but that didn't happen. Well, long story short, the stock actually skyrocketed from a little over 200 euros to over 1,000 euros in less than two days. This resulted in losses of hundreds of millions in euros for Merkel. Unfortunately, Merkel decided to end his life during this financial crisis. His family said that he was broken by his losses, even though he still had $6 billion left. What really happened here? What could he have done differently? The financial crisis affected everyone's cash flow. Merkel's mistake was taking a giant risky bet with too much at stake. What do you think? Number 6. Alan Stanford Alan Stanford was the chairman of the now defunct Stanford Financial Group of Companies. At his peak, he was worth more than $2 billion. In 2020, his net worth is still zero because, well, he's still serving a 110-year prison sentence for his role in running a massive Ponzi scheme. In early 2009, the government started investigating his company. He was charged by the SEC with fraud and multiple violations of U.S. securities laws for an alleged massive ongoing fraud for around $7 billion. A former Stanford financial executive told SEC officials that Stanford presented hypothetical investment results as actual historical data in sales pitches to clients. The massive Ponzi scheme was finally revealed and Stanford was found guilty in 2012. You know what his mistake was? Running a massive Ponzi scheme. Number 5. Alberto Villar Back before the internet bubble burst, Alberto Villar and his Amarindo Investment Advisors company made lots of money investing in young high-tech companies. The thing about owning a lot of stock that's worth a lot 
is that it doesn't mean anything until you sell it. Owning a bunch of stock in hot startups that skyrocketed up means that things could skyrocket down uh -oh. just as quickly. At one point, Valar had an estimated net worth of more than $1 billion. By 2008, he was convicted of multiple counts of securities fraud and sentenced to nine years in prison because of misusing investor money. Valar had a problem with wanting fame and recognition. He gave away hundreds of millions of dollars to the world's best opera companies and charities in exchange for his name on plaques. However, he ultimately fell short in many promised donations as his money troubles piled up from his overspending. A lesson to steer clear of fraud is obvious, but just as important is the lesson to not give away hundreds of millions of dollars when the money coming in isn't yours to give. Number 4. Ike Batista Ike Batista fell a long way. At his financial height, he was the richest man in Brazil. He made his money largely through Brazilian natural resource companies, but he ran up a lot of debt. When his businesses crashed in early 2012, so did his net worth. The long and the short of the story is that his oil business failed to meet its production target all the while his other companies needed cash. His net worth fell all the way from an estimated $35 billion to less than $300 million by July 2013. That meant he lost more than 99% of his original net worth. By 2014, Bloomberg reported that Batista had a negative net worth, though, and he agreed. He was quoted saying that his net worth was approximately negative $1 billion. What was his mistake? It was really just taking on too much debt and putting almost all his eggs in one basket with oil. For example, he defaulted on a $45 million bond payment in 2013, which was the largest corporate default in Latin American history. But his worst mistake was bribing government officials in order to secure government contracts. He ended up getting sentenced to 30 years in prison in July of 2018. Number 3. Vijay Malia Vijay Malia isn't a household name in the United States, but he's quite famous in his native India. He was a liquor baron and he also owned the now defunct Kingfisher Airlines. He was reportedly worth around $1.5 billion at one point, but he lost his fortune largely because of massive debts, lavish spending, and of course, financial fraud and money laundering. Indian law enforcement were going to charge him for his financial crimes, but he just said, nope and quickly left the country. Malia left India in March 2016, and he's been stuck there ever since. Malia's nickname was the King of Good Times because of his extravagant lifestyle. However, Malia and his companies have been embroiled in financial scandals and controversy since 2012. A group of 17 Indian banks are still trying to collect approximately $1.3 billion in loans he's taken out. His passport has since been revoked, and he's living in exile in the UK. Indian law enforcement are still attempting to extradite him to India in 2020. Number 2. Jocelyn Wildenstein, Catwoman Imagine having $2 billion. How many of you guys could blow through that? Back in 1999, Jocelyn Wildenstein, otherwise known as Catwoman, received a whopping $2.5 billion in her divorce from her art dealer husband Alec. Not even 20 years later, it's almost all gone. Jocelyn used to brag about her lavish lifestyle, and she also earned her nickname Catwoman because of, um, yes, all of her plastic surgeries that she denied having. What's more amazing than the amount of her surgeries is the fact that back in March of 2018, she actually had a file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. She listed the $900 check she gets from Social Security each month as her only source of income. She didn't have any checking or savings accounts, no retirement fund or pension plan, and no investments. Or at least that's what the filing said. Her personal property was valued at a little more than $16 million. She claimed to owe roughly $6 million to her 16 creditors, but stated that she wanted to file Chapter 11 to avoid liquidation of her assets. She estimated the value of her wardrobe to be only $1,000 and the value of her jewelry at zero. She said her jewelry was worthless. This is despite the fact that she was often being seen in public wearing a huge 32 karat diamond ring. What we really don't get is how she managed to lose billions of dollars. The truth is that even with billions, someone with a ridiculous spending habit can still manage to spend it all. Number one, Bernie Madoff. You know Bernie Madoff, right? We're not going to get too much into his story as he's been covered extensively. He entered financial history by swindling many wealthy people out of tens of billions of dollars in what's most likely the biggest scam in human history. It's estimated that before he went to prison, he was worth about $17 billion. 
but really, should that have really counted as his money? Let's never forget that there's no such thing as a guaranteed return ever. Here's what's next.